Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 34 of How to Survive EVE Online. In this episode, we are going to get started with scanning down an actual cosmic signature, starting with a uh, gravimetric training site. Now, before th this episode was originally filmed, I finished training up astrometrics level 1, so let's load up the core probe launcher and the core scanner probes. And let's close the fitting window, close the cargo hold. Let's actually request the mission from Olari Lacentin and accept the mission. Uh, for the gravimetric site, you are going to need a gravimetric pass key in order to get in. Otherwise, you cannot complete the mission. So, scroll the items hanger to the bottom, accept the mission, and the proof of discovery gravimetric pass key should appear there. Drag it into your cargo hold. Make sure it's in your cargo hold before you undock. By the way, I managed to accidentally mute myself during five-sixths of the original filming of the entire exploration chain. So for this episode and the next episode, you get to listen to me play a game of... What was I thinking? I don't like scanning near busy areas, so I'm going to warp myself to the nearby Ooh, moon. And um, you need to open the scanner window to make, the, to make this thing go away. Alright, I've dropped out of warp. You can either click on the module or hit F1 to launch a probe. And you can also left click the name of a probe on the solar system map to center your camera orbit on that probe. Let's click the analyze button. Now what your probe is doing is trying to detect any cosmic anomalies or cosmic signatures within the specified volume. Cosmic anomalies will be found automatically, those are trivial. Cosmic signatures, however, it can only get the ID code, which is three letters and three numerals, and a distance. So if you left-click the only gravimetric signature that it detected, it gives you a red sphere. All the probe knows is the distance between itself and the target, and even that distance might be slightly wrong depending upon the signal strength. Here the signal strength is about 43.59%. Let's launch a second probe. And let's drag it over to the side. And you can do that by left-clicking and dragging one of the arrow pairs near the control box for the probe. And it's worth noting that the way you move the probes around in space, left-clicking and dragging an arrow pair will move, it, move the probe only along that coordinate axis. All right, so the two lateral axes and the vertical axis. However, if you left-click and drag a surface of the control box, then you can move the probe around on that particular plane. So the lateral plane, one of the vertical planes, or the other of the vertical planes, which I apparently I did not demonstrate. So let's click Analyze. Now, if we left-click on the gravimetric signature, we get a red circle. What this red circle means is as follows. Each probe can measure the distance between itself and the target that it detects. And every target has a, has a unique ID code, so the probes know when they're all looking at the same target. So probe 1 thinks that the target is somewhere on this sphere. Probe 2 based on its own distance from the target, thinks the, the target is on that sphere. And when two spheres intersect in three-dimensional space, they intersect in a circle. That's why you're getting a circle drawn on the map for this result. Those two probes are only getting two distances. So the best you can do with that is a circle. If we look at one of these other signatures, it's a LADAR si uh, signature but only one probe sees it, because it's drawing a sphere. If the other probe were able to see it, then you'd have a circle instead of a sphere there. Alright, so if it's a circle, two probes can see it. If it's a sphere, only one probe can see it. So let's launch a third probe. 
And let's drag the probes out into something resembling a triangle. And analyze. Now, we're looking, in this example, we're looking for MQE 541, so sh left click the first result, shift left click the second result. And what you see is two beacon markers, two points in space. The reason we're getting that result is because three probes can see it. How does that follow? Well, one probe, each probe is measuring its dis own distance to the target. So you've got three different distances, and you know the locations of the three probes. Uh, the first probe thinks the target is on that sphere. The second probe thinks the target is on that sphere. The third probe thinks the target is on that sphere. And when three spheres intersect in space, they generally intersect at two points. Two spheres intersect in a circle. Throw a third sphere into the mix, a circle and a sphere intersect at two points. So if three probes can see this thing, you get a two-point result. Alright, so you'll always get a pair if three and only three probes can see this thing. All right. So, the next step... Uh, by the way, I mentioned how you can move each probe individually, but if you hold down the shift key and then click and drag one of the probes, all of the other probes will move along with it in formation. So you do that by holding down shift and then trying to move one probe around. So let's center this formation laterally and launch a fourth probe. And let's move the fourth probe a little bit up. So we've got the probes surrounding the suspected target locations. And analyze. Alright, let's left click on MQE-541 again, Gravimetric Training Site, that's a 100% signal strength, that means we can bookmark it, we can warp to it. So right click it from the results and bookmark location. You can warp to it from the result list if you want. Oh, and we also got a LADAR training site down to 100%, we're going to need that later on in the exploration tutorial, so right click, bookmark that location as well. We're not ready for it we would need a pass key for the LADAR site and we're not on that step of the mission chain. Just bookmark it for now and hopefully that site will still be there when you're ready for it. Anyway, I've now sent my probes back to a four astronomical unit radius and I'm scanning around another planet. I have a grav and a LADAR site and as long as I'm out here scanning I want to look for a radar and a mag site as well. That way I don't have to go stew more than, than one scanning session to find anything. And uh, let's see. There's a radar site, FJW-403. That's a two-point result, so only three probes can see it. It has to be the point on the left, because if it were the point on the right, all four probes would see it, and we wouldn't be getting a two-point result. So let's move the formation to cover that point on the left. And let's collapse the formation a little bit, then all click and drag to move in the probes closer and analyze. And hopefully, we should get a much stronger single signal on this. Should be able to get a 100% solution on it. Yep. Right click the radar training site, bookmark the location. And let's start sending the probes off to scan near another planet. By the way, a lot of exploration sites will be clustered around planets, usually within a four astronomical unit radius. I think there are exceptions. Uh, but if you start your search near planets, you're more likely to find things. That said, it is possible to set your probes to a very wide radius and sweep uh, a much larger volume throughout the solar system. You'll just have to go through a couple extra two, three, four scans to actually pin down anything. But it's very thorough. Uh, Alright, we seem to have a magnetometric site, but only one probe can see it. Since that result sphere is overlaps some of the other probes, it has to be somewhere on that result sphere 
where the other probes don't overlap it. So that's how I decide which direction to move the formation in when trying to figure out where to, where to scan next. Alright. Uh, we've got two different magnetometric sites, one of which is a two-point signature, uh, is a two-point result. Let's focus on that one. Two pro three probes can see it. And let's see. You know what? Um, warping to the gravimetric training site so I don't waste time. You can warp around while scanning. You can do both at the same time. Uh, where is this mag site? There we go. Right click the mag site, bookmark location. And that should give us one of each kind, but let's also uh, bookmark some extra sites. Though why I was bookmarking extra grav sites when I've already got a good grav site, I do not know. Make sure you do to recover your probes. Your probes have a limited lifespan, which I believe is 4,000 seconds. That's about an hour and six minutes. If you leave them in space too long, they will expire, they'll be destroyed, and you'll have to buy new probes. If you're in wormhole space, where you can't buy anything because there are no stations and no markets, you're stuck. So make sure to take good care of your probes. You need at least four to be able to find anything. And apparently the first gravimetric site I tried to warp to had already expired. So we're warping to another one of the gravimetric bookmarks. We've arrived at the acceleration gate. Again, you do need your proof of discovery gravimetric pass key. Activate the gate. If you forgot your pass key, you're going to be stuck on this gate. I suppose you could travel at sublight speed 10,000 kilometers. It would take you a while. Alright, once you're inside the pocket, uh, Left-click the training container and approach it. Turn on the afterburner. By the way, some mining missions uh, require unusable ores, like augmine and banadine. It is possible for somebody else to try and swipe some of your ore from a mining mission set and hold it ransom so that you can't complete the mission. If it happens to be one of those types, you can always come back to a gravimetric training site like this and get some replacement banadine or augamine or whatever. And that way you can still complete the mission without paying a ransom to a player who might not honor the ransom anyway. Augamine, Mercium, banadine... Uh, uh, I guess that's it here. Right click the agent, turn in the mission, and... In the next episode, we will finish off the rest of the exploration chain, which is just more of the same. In the meantime, thank you for watching.